Ladies and gentlemen, the Jojo, the Jojo Lands. Lands. The Jojo Lands. The Jojo Lands. The Jojo Lands? The Jojo Lands. The Jojo Lands. The Jojo Lands. This bit is fucking stupid. Let's just The Jojo the was up in the air, and now the Jojo Lands. Exactly. Exactly. Hi. Bravo, Iraqi. <laughs> Welcome back to... The Jojo Lands podcast. What's it called? The Lokaka Cast. Yeah. Welcome back. This week, this month, we're covering chapter five of part nine. Rise up. But before we get into that, I have some things to say. Okay. About a month that I had. Oh, yes. How was your month, man? How was your month? How's okay. it going? Um, so, first of all, like I, I, I was doing my, my like third rewatch of Breaking Bad because I love Breaking Bad. And something new that I noticed while I was watching, um, there's a uh, secret hidden villain in uh, Breaking Bad that maybe you didn't notice. Mm. Who are we going to talk about? Okay, so do you remember the episode Rabid Dog, where um, <clears throat> basically like uh, Hank recruits Jesse to like uh, basically inform on him, him to Walt. He, he gets him to wear a wire. Right. It has one of my favorite uh, lines in the whole series. Mr. White, he's the devil. Okay? He is. He is smarter than you. He is luckier than you. Whatever you right. think is okay. going to happen, the exact reverse opposite of that is going to happen. So, so I so what I want to talk about is the is the plaza scene where like uh um, oh, yeah. you know, he's going to the he's going to the meet with Breaking Walt. Bad spoilers everyone. <laughs> Oh yeah, totally. Um, but if you haven't seen Bla Breaking Bad, you should absolutely watch Breaking Bad. It's a fucking classic. Um, he's going to the he's going to the meet in the plaza with uh, Walt, um, and he sees this uh, mean-looking biker jacket-wearing dude who just happens to be there with his daughter. Yeah. Uh, but like, he, but like, the way that it's framed from his point of view, like we don't see the daughter, we don't see anybody that he's like with doesn't he kind of so, look like walt isn't that the whole thing no no he guy? doesn't look like walt okay, no 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 that's a di that's a different guy okay uh i wonder if i can actually get a picture of him uh breaking bad plaza. so we're talking about yeah. secret villains because recently merc and i watched clerks together and you guys yes. know that scene where yes. they talk about the i'm just giving the audience the context while you i look wanted it up. to I wanted I wanted to sort of like leave that like um, for towards the end of my oh, okay. month this recap just so that like we could transition into your month. All right, okay. Because that was also part of your month. I suppose. I can't so. find a picture of the guy. Uh, hang on. I can pull up the uh, episode on Netflix on my phone so fast. It's near the end of the episode. <clears throat> hang on, hang on. Uh, I remember there's a Reddit post, so let me. Copy image. Fuck. Uh, did I get it? Yeah. Okay. So, the guy uh, behind the column, sort of, right? In this picture. Okay, yeah. That guy. That guy, yeah. Just by, the being, just by being there, he made everything so much worse. <laughs> This man, simply by taking his daughter to the park for the day, ruined all chances of a good ending. Absolutely, yeah. He's a secret <laughs> so that's, villain. That's the secret villain of Breaking Bad, everybody. But uh, at this point, to my TED talk. <laughs> the secret ultimate villain. If only he had gone like to the park that day instead of to the featureless concrete rec center. But uh, I also saw... Um... Uh, across the spider verse which is a i think oh, it's probably the greatest okay well i think it's probably the greatest spider-man movie of all time i really uh, and i'll really say no more about it. it but uh this girl i'm going out with has not seen any of these fucking movies and i was like she was like i want to watch spider-man so that i can go watch the new spider-man even though i haven't seen any of them and i'm like oh okay well you're gonna need to watch spider-man one spider-man two spider-man three amazing spider-man one amazing spider-man two Sp 
uh, Civil War, oh, Spider-Man yeah, fucking... Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home, Spider-Man No Way Home, and then Into the Spider-Verse. And then well, you can watch Across the Spider-Verse. Well, well, the cool thing is, like, um, uh, the uh, Spider-Verse series doesn't actually ask that much of you. It's not like, um, no, it's not like uh, uh, fucking No Way Home, where it's like, if you haven't seen five previous Spider-Man movies, plus the MCU Spider-Man movies... Yeah, that was building uh, on, like, nine films of shit. <clears throat> yeah. It's like, watch the entire MCU and also these five Spider-Man movies. Yeah, I was kind of having a lark when I said that, because really all you need to do is watch Into, and then you can watch Across. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I but, haven't uh, seen it yet, because the person I'm going out with is not uh, up to date, and I wanted us to watch it together, and we have not yet made the plans to watch Into and then Across. So I'm, like, waiting. I'm waiting to do that first experience together, but I can't. Well... I really want like to see I it. Like I said, though. Across the Spider-Verse is my new favorite uh, Spider-Man movie. I've Just by osmosis, just by being on Twitter, I, I, I know too much already. Like, I know Spider-Man 2099 is actually, like, the bad guy, which I didn't know going in. But, you know, everything I've learned, even uh, if it has been sort of a minor spoiler, it just makes me more excited to see the thing. It just makes me more interested in what the fuck's going on. I mean, going in, I knew that uh, at some point, Miguel was going to be hostile towards Miles, but I didn't know um, the context of that. So, well then, that's, that's great. If, that's the same thing that I know. If, yeah, if that's as much as you know, I don't think you have anything to worry about. I'm like a hundred percent sure they're gonna fight. I don't know if he's like the big bad or not, but anyway. So yeah, speaking of movies and not movies that I couldn't watch, but movies that I did watch. Fucking we Clerks. Fucking watched Clerks together this month. For no... It's great. I, 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 lo I love Clerks. You really liked it. This was a movie that I, on my first watch, was like, God, this movie is pissing me off. This is such a slog. I hate Dante so much. And the second time, I still hated Dante the exact same amount, but I enjoyed the movie more because I knew at the end, <laughs> you know, he gets punished for his crimes. He loses both girls. Because he fucking, he'd never heard of Bird in the Hand, Two in the Bush. Oh, that idiot. yeah. That's what, that's what you were referring to. I yeah. thought you were referring to when you made me watch the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the original ending. The original slash like, alternate oh. ending. Oh, I, it's I, such I, a why, downer. Why'd you, why'd you make me, oh, why'd look. you make me watch this after the, the, the ending? Look at the, look at the connection we're about to make. It's exactly like the episode of Breaking Bad where the kid gets shot dead right at the end of the train heist. That is the Clerks alternate ending. That is the emotional gut punch of it. It's the fucking finale of the Breaking Bad episode, Dead Free. And and somebody and somebody pointed out also, um, because Randall turned off the secure the surveillance camera, right? Uh, so they could go play hockey on the roof. He would never be caught, making Randall the secret villain. The secret villain! My God. I think actually Josuke is the secret villain of Jojolian. You know why? The moment that he was taunting the head doctor and he was destroying all of those vials of Lokakaka 6251, like, if he had just done, like, less awesome hero shit and maybe just, like, put some of that in his pockets, the story could have ended better. He could have saved his mom. But instead, he was just like, nope, I'm gonna go hog wild on these vials. On these two. He could have saved, like, literally anyone. <laughs> he could have fucking saved literally anyone. That's exactly right. There was tons of opportunity, and he was just too busy being a badass hero boy and breaking all the bad guy's stuff. Didn't think for a second. I think actually Josuke is the secret villain of Jojoli, and he fucked it up for everybody. All right, well, That's we're not here to joy. talk about the secret villain of Jojolion. We're here to talk about the actual hero of Jojo Lands. Oh, yeah, dude. This whole time, this whole part up until now... I've been like, oh, who's our real protagonist? Is it Dragona or Jodeo? This chapter, Jodeo truly stepped forward to assume the position of protagonist in my mind. Like he's definitely well, team leader. There's also the um, there's the there's the parallel with Jorno in that he watches all of his friends get wrecked, and then slowly approaches the piano. Right, right. God, Jodeo's theme is gonna go so hard in thirty five years. I hope my grandchildren are alive to see it. <laughs> okay, so is there anything else we wanted to talk about from our months? 
You got a job. I did. I got a job. Uh, it's basically the same as like a, a, a part-time job that I used to do. Uh, only difference is now it's a, um, it's not really a nine to five. I, I, I do get to like, um, I, I come in around like eight 45 leave around, uh, oh, four. Right. On. So, but, uh, there's also a lunch break in there to factor in. So it's not a true nine to five. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm coming in every, uh, weekday. So that's going to probably affect the, uh, recording schedule of the podcast because it's going to limit the amount of days that I'm going to be able to record, but I'm making money moves. Big that's money what's important. moves. Ladies and gentlemen, he's gaming. Anyway, you have anything else to talk about about our months? I'm still doing my job. I'm still seeing that girl. Life is good. Everything's growing great for the Zackmeister. I'm just going to oh, move on to the um, chapter, pretty much. If we don't have any I other uh, catching up stuff to I do. Guess, uh, I guess uh, I, I wrote more of uh, the Department of Anomalies. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, and I, I, really, I really need to update my link tree so that it actually links to um, the current Department of Anomalies, because not that anybody's really going to my link tree. Uh, it's the only the only uh, actual existing link to it is in my Twitter bio, and I don't think anybody goes to my Twitter anymore. So I don't know. I gotta I gotta I gotta find a way to to put it out there. I I, I just realized. Do I even follow you on Twitter anymore? Do we follow each other? Uh, I'm pretty sure we the do. Original Merc. Yeah, yeah, we do. Indeed, we do. I love that your picture is still Batman with the I Heart Gotham mug. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't um, I haven't tweeted in a while or updated anything. <laughs> no, Clark, I can tech this shit. <laughs> he thought he could tech it, bro. The tech window is so tight on that. All right. Well. I think that's enough. Um, that's enough looking enough at Chris's faffing Twitter. Faffing about. Faffing about. We've completed our faffing about. Our faffing about meter is full, and it's time to get to fucking around. It's, it's time to cash it out. <laughs> Throw it's that time to spend around. all that meter on a super. Yeah! You fucking read my mind. I've been playing Street Fighter VI. Shit's I fun. It. I wish I could. I don't have it. I mean, it reminds me of, like, the best of five and four rolled into one. It's great. I'm having a really good time with it. Although I'm only playing Ken. Because they took out my other characters, which I like. I just play oh, no. Ken now. Who, who, do you, who do you usually play? Well, in 5, I played Ken and Alex, which is exactly who I play in Street Fighter 3, the third strike. But, because I like grapplers, and I didn't own Alex yet... I was also trying out our Mika, Rainbow Mika, and she's sort of like a grappler, wrestler type character, and uh, it was cool, and I enjoyed playing her. And neither Alex nor Mika are in this game. For grapplers, I either have to play Manon, like the ballet dancer lady who's new for this game, or Zangief. And I just, you know, Alex and uh, Mika only required like half circles. For Geef, you have to do a full circle to get the fucking SBD. But have you have you tried them on modern controls? Uh, I mean, I tried modern controls, but I don't, I don't understand. Like I've been playing Street Fighter for long enough that it just makes sense to me. Light punch, medium punch, hard punch, light kick, medium kick, heavy kick. So like the fact that it's just four buttons is like I actually don't know what anything does anymore. Like it's just weird and stressful. Like I I I'm. I consider modern controls only to be played with when I forget to change them to classic. Like, I'm just not even fucking with it. It just stresses me out. Like, I could either know what moves I'm doing and maybe win or lose or have no idea what I'm doing. Like, it regresses me to just a button masher. I don't like it. I would so much rather keep my six-button layout and be bad and have to learn the hard way than use the crutch of modern controls. Just for me, my brain would rather keep climbing the hard mountain than put any training wheels on. Not because I'm, like, too prideful to do it. It's just I played with it, and I'm, it doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Anyway, Street Fighter Six, Dope. 
Drive impact, good mechanic. If you say drive impact is like not skill based and it shouldn't be in the game, get good. You suck. Anyway. All right. Well, almost 15 minutes in. Let's. We're on our third attempt now to actually talk about the JoJo Lance. To the chapter. Actually, I have something else I wanted to talk about. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> November rain. Rise up to the pinnacle of this world's mechanisms. Also, the Rohan Goes to the Louvre movie is now in theaters, and it's a smash hit. Oh, neat. Have you seen any I of the so. Rohan live-action stuff? Uh, no, I haven't. Is I that haven't what this seen... is? Yeah, it's like live-action uh... Rohan TV show, and then they just did, like, a spin-off movie. They adapted Rohan Goes to the Louvre. Huh. And, like, in the Rohan TV show, they're not just adapting the Spoke Kishibe Rohan segments, they're also adapting, like, other things, like shit from part four. Like, they have an episode where it's Cheap Trick. Oh, cool. So uh... anyway, it seems interesting to me, but I've never watched it. Uh, the people who have seen it are like, yeah, even though it's live action, it's very JoJo-y. Like, you get the vibe. It's good. Well, maybe I'll uh, <laughs> check that out when I have time. Ha 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 ha. What does this laugh mean? It means I have to work now. <laughs> I have to go to work today. All right. Here we go. This is my this is my Joker movie. <laughs> this is I'm, my Joker origin story. I am going to become the fucking Jonker. All right. Okay. We're opening it up. Jodio on the cover page. Boom. Here we go. Oh, sorry, not that. Next. Okay. So, the chapter opens with this really cool first-person shot from Dragona's perspective. I don't remember us ever doing this in JoJo before. This POV shot that we got. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I wonder if we could get um, sort of like a confirmation on whether... Because um, like, like also, like the, fir the first thing you see on this first page, the diamond has fallen from his hands, which seems to... Uh, basically confirm unless uh i don't know if that's a translator thing well hey you could trans now or you could trans later you know what i'm saying that's true anyway the the pronoun game with dragona continues to be strange i'm gonna use the bizarre, neutral they even. from now on forever y y you might you might say it continues to be bizarre Dude, I had a weird moment at the Smash tournament uh, the day before yesterday where I went there and I played against somebody and then I was talking about it afterwards and I was like, yeah, they went Wolf and then they went Peach and they kicked my fucking ass. And the person I was talking to, instead of just understanding that I'm talking about a singular person and using the gender neutral pronoun they, they were like, they? What do you mean they? It was just one person, right? And I was like... Yeah, this individual over here chose to play Peach after Wolf, and I had a chance against Peach, but not Wolf. And you're like, and they, they, they said, oh, but why, why did you say they? And I was like, I don't know, man, words, leave me alone. And I went away and sat down at the initial D machine and put my quarters in, and this person came up to me and whispered in my ear, it, it, is it because they're transgender? And I was like, I don't know, get away from me. I just didn't ask what they would like to be called, so I said they, leave me alone. It was really weird. This reminds me of uh, an exchange from one of uh, Seth Eckel's videos where uh, one character's like, um, can't trust nobody, they preying on my downfall. And uh, another character's like, who is they? <laughs> and and, the, and the, the first guy says, y'all bitches. And the second guy says, we ain't non-binary. <laughs> oh, Seth Eckel. That man's been around for a long time. Boneless pizza. Yeah. Anyway. That's a whole that's a whole series. I know, it's a whole fucking saga even. Wanna start a Sethical podcast? <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny. We have to watch all the Sethical videos start to finish. Okay, so the diamond has fallen from his hands. I don't know what pronoun I'm supposed to use for Dragona, but I'm just gonna go with they and call it a day. Easy peasy. You say bro you say bronoun? Bronoun. <laughs> What's your pronouns, fam? Anyway, somebody got asked a question on Tumblr, you know, the submitted asks, 
and it said, how do you pronounce your name? And the person responded, she, her. And then they picked it back up and put another reply and said, wait, that's not what that said. How do you pronounce your name? <laughs> wait, oh, that's man. not what that said. Anyway, so diamond on the floor, cool POV shot. And I love that the chapter starts with this POV shot and Rohan tying up two out of the four of our team members because the chapter just opens in a place of pure hopelessness. You're like, oh, we're fucked. Like, this mission has gone horribly wrong. This is essentially the team wipe you were predicting. Yeah, this is the team wipe. I wanted to see our characters lose early on. And we almost get there. So, this first page, next. And then it just keeps getting more scary. Like, me, I'm Dragona right now. I'm just huffing and puffing and backing against the wall and I don't know what to do. They're tied up. Rohan's calling the police. It's the house on E Road up the hill from the coffee farm. Yes, it's an emergency. There's a gang of four robbers. No one's injured, but they were behaving violently, officer. Yes, regarding weapons, I think they had was only small edge tools like scissors and such. Yes, yes, one of the burglars is standing in front of me right now. Like, this, reading this on the second page of the new chapter, I was like, whoa, 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 this is all happening so fast. We're really going to get a game over? It's definitely, like, the highest stakes that uh, a first battle has been in JoJo, I think. Yeah. You know my friend Casey, who I've always wanted to come on to, uh, the podcast with us and be like our first guest? I was talking about oh, the yeah, chapter should... with Casey. We should, we, should, we should talk to Casey, try and get him on. Yeah, I was, uh, I was messaging him, and it was like, I forgot to bring up, hey, do you want to be on the podcast? So it didn't happen this month. I forgot to talk about it. I was going to, and then I got distracted. But uh, we were talking about it, and I, I brought up, I don't think any JoJo part has gone so hard so fast. You know what I mean? Like, we are in the fucking thick of it. We are in the good shit. We are in, like, the hype, intense moments already, just on Chapter 5. I don't know if any JoJo part has gone so hard so fast. Like, there's usually, like, it's got a game momentum, we're getting into it. Jojolian was a slow-ass start. Araki really doesn't want to waste our time with this one. I appreciate that. We're just getting get, right into the thick of it. Get directly to the high stakes. Fuck yeah. I mean, like, just for the sake of argument, where were we in Jojo uh, on Chapter 5? Like, on Steel Ball Run, for example. Let's see. So it would be Volume 2. Let's see. <clears throat> Just for the sake of it, I want to see, like, what Chapter 5... Okay, so Chapter 6 of Steel Ball Run. We're doing horse races. It's like Diego versus Gyro vying for the lead. I mean, this is, like, exciting, cool stuff, but this is not anywhere close to, like, the fate of the absolute narrative that we're getting to so early in Part 9. Oh, dude, Poco Loco. The whole Poco Loco thing is in this one. Oh, Chapter 7? Wow, okay, these are really short chapters. I forgot it's, uh, before it became Ultra Jump. Anyway, so, you know, the other parts, five chapters in, still goofing around. Still, like, you know... Cool stuff's happening, but we're setting things up. This is already payoff. Like, we've gone so hard so fast. Yeah, I mean, like, think about where we were in part one at this point. I'm pretty sure Johnny was still, like, hanging out with Danny. <laughs> was Danny alive? I don't know. I actually don't have part one downloaded. I have on my computer, ready to access at a moment's notice, all of the... Uh, Parts I, don't know. I, I honestly I honestly forget the pacing of part one. I don't think Dio was a vampire yet. Probably I'm, not. I'm fairly certain Dio wasn't a vampire yet uh, in chapter five. But then again, I only watched the anime, so. Yeah. I want to uh, actually go back and read parts one and two and three. Because I feel like, although I loved them in the anime, I now love the manga more than the anime. Like when... Uh, when uh, Golden Wind and uh, Stone Ocean came out, I was like, yeah, this is great that it's animated with color and music and sound and motion. But, like, I just liked my experience reading the manga more than I liked my experience watching the anime. So now I'm like, 
manga pilled to hell and back. So I definitely should go back and read the ones I only watched. That uh, that that one arc of of part five, notwithstanding. What the... uh, what what arc? Well, when when when. Because you read part five around the same time I read part five, right? Mm-hmm. So you would have probably encountered the terrible King Crimson scans, right? Yes, it was JoJo's. Uh, it was JoJo's colored adventure up to a point, and then it was black and white up to a point. At which point you would have only the scans from like ten years ago in Comic Sans, where they get everyone's personalities wrong, and it's dumb. After a certain point, you had to read the shit scans. There was just nothing better. But, unlike the Duang scans, it wasn't so hilariously bad that people knew they were getting the wrong experience. It was, like, readable. People just thought Part 5 sucked. That was, certainly scans, my, that was certainly my opinion for a while. Those scans after reading part five. did, like, irreparable damage to Part 5's reputation in the West for years, up until the anime came out. Irreparable damage. Anyway. <clears throat> Rohan is calling the fucking cops. I can't believe Rohan's a snitch. <laughs> Dude, he's a Karen. I mean, he's like a millionaire living in a villa. and He's definitely, uh... I don't know. He is the rich we should eat. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. He is the 1%. Fuck him. I mean, he totally is. He's not a billionaire, but still. I don't know. Maybe he gets a free pass because he's creative. Well, he literally gets a free pass in this chapter because he's creative. Tell me, Kishibe Rohan, you who have destroyed so much, can you name even one thing you have created? Alright, so next page. Also, this is just a classic jojo moment. You know, I've talked about this plenty of times. The difference between uh, a hero and a villain, or the difference between, like, a hero and uh, a bystander is what they'll do when they're backed into the corner. So Dragona, freaking out, back up against the wall, still chooses to resolutely grab the diamond and move forward. Picking it up, are you? And then this little pose that Dragona has, where they're, they've got, like, the fist out in front of them, it almost looks like they're trying to shoot him with a gun that's not there. I love how he's, like, casually strolling uh, towards her right. in this next page. Just like the way this is drawn. This is the this is what I envision in. Um, do you remember when I had you read uh, 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 introductory anti memetics or whatever? Yes, uh, the Alistair SCP Gray, tale? the Alistair Gray yeah. walk. The, do you remember is, your father? Exactly, this is exactly how I imagine him rolling up on Paul Kim. <laughs> Just with this goofy ass slow walk, but you know you can't stop him. Alright, so Rohan's like, are you going to run? Dragona slides the diamond into the pouch and takes a first running step, and then immediately it clatters into the mug over there. So, Araki so far has been keeping it ambiguous, like, what is going on with this diamond? Are they dropping it and not noticing it? No, it's like supernaturally dropping itself. This is like the third example we've seen of it. So now he's making it really clear that... Yeah, it just, it teleports to the cup. Right. I mean, there's no physical way it could have gotten over and in there. And then I like the little anticipation panel. The roll. And then we get over there. And we look inside the thing. Check the pouch. Freak out some more. Money on the ground. And then Rohan starts explaining. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this bundle of banknotes belongs to me. It would seem that he took it out of a drawer and shoved it into his pockets. Yes, no doubt about it. This is, this is, um, if I can, sorry, if I can, if I interrupt. Go again. ahead, go ahead. Uh, this is like serious, um, uh, Polnareff on the stairs, uh, energy here. I would agree. This definitely is, uh, just a moment of sweaty freak out <laughs> from our protagonist. Really well, I'm, 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 I'm thinking, I'm thinking of like specifically the first Polnareff on the stairs moment. Uh, trying to approach Dio. Yeah. And there's an element of how the fuck does this stand work? What is happening? Why can't I even... You know, there's a little bit of like, you know, pretend Dio is here and he's using time stop and taking the diamond out of your pocket. That's literally... Yeah, this is that's, that's what this feels like. Yeah. This feels like the world before we actually knew what the world did. Yeah, yeah. The way it's presented... Definitely, uh, 
similar to the blind experiences with the world from part three. I say that as if I ever didn't know what the world did. Yeah, that's true. F- fucking internet memes. I mean, I was told about JoJo by this guy, Chris Craiglow, at my high school. And I was like, oh, okay, JoJo, yeah. And then um, I found out about it from him. And then some time passed. And like January of 2015, I'm pretty sure, when I made West and John was in there. And it was just me and John for weeks. <laughs> it was nobody else. And then uh, there was something where I was like, I just watched this anime. And John was like, JoJo next. And I was like, yeah, JoJo next. And so... It was just a confluence of, like, various people in my life telling me about it over a long enough period of time where I was like, I'll give this a shot. And then it became my favorite thing ever. But the point is, Chris Craiglow fucking told me what Dio's stand did right from the start. He was, like, describing all these cool moments from the series, trying to get me to watch it. But he was, like, spoiling shit left and right. Damn. That's rough. I know. I think it, I think it would have been really cool for you if, uh, if you could have had that experience where... You don't know what the world does. Yeah, it would have been cool. But, oh well, you know, maybe if he didn't tell me all that cool stuff, maybe I never would have watched it. Maybe it was the right move. Who knows? Right, so Rohan is narrating about the bundle of banknotes. I'll just be taking that. It came back. So, we'll get to this later, but there's some force by which the things that are stolen from Rohan is coming back to him. Some kind of mechanism? Yeah. It reminds me of Milagro Man, actually. Like, no one is able to take away the oh, money. Yeah, it just keeps of. self-duplicating. Wait, wait what, if, what if Milagro Man was, like, I don't know, part of the same mechanism as this? I don't know. I don't know. I think that the whole concept in Jojolian of, like, curses and blessings are like two sides of the same coin and like it's possible that what we view as a curse or a blessing is actually the result of a stand i think we might be getting back into stuff like that because you know the lava rocks i want to talk about those but we're not there yet so dragona is freaking the fuck out I, th- I think I think it's really cool that Iraqi uh, made a meme based on that rock. M- m- wrote a part based on that uh, on that rock meme. Rock meme. Do you remember the you, be- you remember the, uh, the 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 meme where like Hero he like, a rock meme. No, the the welcome to JoJo. We have part one rock, part two rock. Oh yeah, I did. Well, uh, I do there, remember that. Didn't we look there, at that there last was a, there episode? There was a version of. There was a version. Of, uh, there was a version of that, but where before we had the part nine rock. Uh huh. So I just think it's really cool of a Rocky to to write this part based on that meme, <laughs> where the rock is the most important thing. I mean, incredibly cool of him. We do like rocks in JoJo. We like rocks. We like to have fun here. We're big. We're big rock fans. Oh, dude, huge! The biggest rock fans. Hard rock, soft rock, <laughs> dad rock. Jesus Christ, Zachary, they're minerals. <laughs> Shut up, man. <laughs> okay. Um, hang on, I'm trying to find something. And I... Can I find him? Where the fuck... I, I have no idea what's up with my energy this afternoon. Uh, you're high energy, man. You're fucking going I'm like, for it. I'm not even like a like a particularly high energy person it's just like you know this afternoon i'm just i'm just feeling it going for it get into it and go now where the fuck is this cord i have a cord that i need to be using to charge a thing and i can't find it give me just a second here i'll be back in 60 seconds we'll edit this out of the final verge hang on okay all right there we go now we're set sorry about that editing that out of the final version or at least uh, I will there we go now you can see that on the thing and we'll yeah, cut J- right back Jamie just, t- just, take, just take that out for us would you <laughs> pull that up Jamie now remove it now invert it now upside down <laughs> now we'll put a smiley face on him now, now put beard. a purple filter over it what if it was purple yeah anyway alright 
Those are the JoJo color changes, isn't it? It's like, here's a perfectly good scene. What if it was purple? And it fucking now hits it's even every better. time. I know. Just only improved it. Right, so I love that the opening to this chapter is just like, no one's around to help. Everyone's unconscious or too far away. Dragona is just gonna get fucking kidnapped and fucked. Wait, no, I mean, Dragona is, like, gonna lose the mission. Edit that out. <laughs> Cut this matter. part, Jeremy. <laughs> so, Rohan's like, what are you asking me questions for? You're the ones who came into my house uninvited. You can't leave now, though. You even brought these cable ties with you? Hold out both hands. I'm tying you up. Come here. Put your hands out. And there's, like, all these anticipation panels of Dragona, like, getting the mask removed and getting so close to getting zip-tied, and then... This is what I love about Araki. Like, look at the panels on this page. Like, tension and fear, tension, tension. The panels are getting smaller, building anticipation, and then you turn it, boom! Huge spread, the rain inside. Like, there's no feeling like that in anime. You can cut as hard as you want, you can use as booming of a sound effect as you want. It will never replicate the feeling of me looking at the page and getting to that last panel and being like, oh shit, what's gonna happen next? And then the page turn. The feeling of a good, well-executed page turn cannot be duplicated in anime. You can try. You can get close. But this is what makes me a manga-pilled individual. It's like this medium can do things that you actually can't do in anime. Anyway, this is sick. I love this page. Everything's getting rained on. And then you see, I love this choice to have the one leg of November Rain visible. You know, in the second panel. Oh, wow. I didn't even see that before. It's pretty cool, because we haven't seen the, the body stand form of November Rain in a while, since, like, the first chapter. So, it kind of reminds you what it looks like, and I guess it actually... Because remember a previous oh, this... chapter... This does an this does answer our uh, one of one of my predictions. Uh, yeah. Where it's like um, I predicted that like you know it wouldn't be able to make it rain inside because it needs space to stand, but it's like no, no, it just it just does it. It just works. But this was one of the big questions that I had. I think like two chapters ago. Like, does November rain need to physically be standing over something to make it rain there? And if so. You know, I guess, what's the I height limit? It, I guess clipping into the wall counts. Yeah, I mean, stands are intangible. Fuck it. But this is so cool. I love this. The rain hits, and then Rohan turns around real quick, and there's nothing. <laughs> or not there's nothing. But it's like... It's like the joke of, like, you're making a silly face behind your friend's back, and he turns around to look at it, and you're like... <laughs> like you're just doing nothing. Like, the rain is... Stop! As soon as he turns to look, it all stops. And then this is giving us a pretty good idea of uh, his ability and its, uh, its limitations. Because, yes, he can make it rain inside. And we already knew this from uh, when, he did the, um, when he did the thing with the baggie of drugs. You remember when he was getting arrested? The rain hit the woman's hand and acted like normal rain, but then when it hit the baggie of drugs, it fired into it like a bullet. So he can choose which objects get rained on heavy and which objects, if the rain is touching them, will just behave like normal rain. We've known yeah, that we since see, then, but this is another this demonstration it, of that coming up. We, we see this because it seeps through the carpet. Yeah. All right, so this page, the other cohort that was standing watch poolside, you're here, aren't you? Uh, yeah, and like Rohan was like, I can't say I expected you not only to stick around, but to actually come inside the house. Like, he felt like this other kid is just going to oh, abandon his comrades. you're approaching me? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Rohan is like so evil and awesome in this, but he's not evil. He's just Rohan. Like, he, this is what would happen if four stand users tried to break into his house and rob him. Bro, they broke into his house. He's not, but I mean, like, he's acting so menacing. From the perspective of our characters, this is a bad guy that we have to fight and defeat. But I love that from the audience's perspective, this is just Rohan. This is just kind of how he operates. This is, oh, that wacky Rohan. Yeah. Rohan's gathering clues about the standability in this room. 
the rain near the pool that got the thorns of the cacti, wet with raindrops, that was him. He can't do it in a large area, but he can choose a target and even make it rain inside. Where is he? There are innate rules to the range a stand has. Where is he acting from? I have to wonder, for what reason did he make it rain inside? And then he steps on the carpet. It seeped into the carpet. And then he falls through. This is awesome. The way that Jodio's hands are just in shadow here kind of reminds me of when Yasuo fell into the hole uh, near the meditation pine and got molested by the shadow figure, and then it turns out it was just Sarugi. Yeah, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna say it. It, it actually reminds me of, uh, but like, I guess, I guess it's kind of a weak connection, but it reminds me of um, how Jorno and Koichi defeated Black Sabbath. Hmm. But in reverse. Right? No? Well, no. The literally, like, sinking Jorno into the, into the ground. Oh, I forgot that fucking happened. I thought Black Sabbath was killed by the tree going up. Yeah, but Jorno needed to reach the roots. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. No, I fucking forgot completely about that. That's like... What? That's like the... It's like the third fight in part five? Se second? No, because you've got... Because he has the lighter, means he's met Polpo, means he's met Bucci. So he's already fought Koichi a little bit and gotten away from him, and fought Bucciarati. I don't know if you would okay. fight, uh, call that early encounter against Bucci, or against Koichi, uh, in fact, a battle. But I would say it kind of is. Also, I like that they have Koichi, like, find this guy, but then he sticks around and the Koichi part of the story isn't paid off until the finale of Black Sabbath. It's a cool touch. Sorry, what? I, I just completely spaced for a second. What did you say? I like how Koichi is there as a part four holdover to set up part five and to meet Jorno, but he doesn't just leave the story after their initial meeting. Like, he sticks around, and the Koichi part of the story isn't concluded until the end of the Black Sabbath fight. Like, that's a nice touch. That's cool. You could have just had him be there for, like, a chapter and then leave. But he sticks around a little bit. I like that. That's neat. And I didn't know who Koichi was when I read Part 5, because I fucking skipped Part 4. <gasps> a part skipper. I know, my dirty, dark history. Here's the thing, part four was about to come out in anime format, and I loved the anime at this time. I was not manga-pilled at this time in history. So, like, part four was about to come out, but I was hungry for more JoJo, and I had read that part five was sort of disconnected from the other parts. You know, we don't ever follow up on these characters, nor do you really need the stuff that came before. You know, you can just read part five out of order, and it'll be fine. So I did that. I read part five before four, and then 4 came out in anime format, watched that, and then I read 6, 7, 8, and now 9. So, so that was my one four? part that I skipped. So, so part 4 was kind of like a better call Koichi then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Like, this guy I know from part 5 who knows Jotaro somehow, like, let's see how that happened. And then by the finale of part 4, where he says you really are a reliable guy, it's like, oh, I totally understand why he sent him to Italy. It is. It's a better call, Goichi. It's a prequel. <laughs> That's funny. And also, like I've always said, parts 4, 5, and 6 are all just different sequels to 3. 5 is really not a sequel to 4. They, they're totally different in tone and feel and uh, the kind of story. 6 is not really a sequel to 4 or 5. Same thing. They're all sequels to 3. So, you know. 6, six is kind of pretty directly a sequel to 3. Right, but, like, so are 4 and 5. They're both, like... So, here, here's, here's what we have. We have a sequel to 3, wherein Jotaro is a bit older, and he takes on the role of the Joseph in the part, essentially. Like, he's the more experienced one. He's now leading the team. We have uh, a sequel to part 3, focusing on Dio's son. We have a sequel to part 3, focusing on Jotaro's daughter. But none of those are following up on each other. They're all just following up on part 3, if you don't count Koichi's appearance in part 5. Okay, yeah. You know, like, they're all jumping off of Stardust Crusaders. They're not really jumping off of each other. So that's why I considered it an okay part to skip, 
but I was never skipping it permanently. I was only skipping it for like a month because I could not wait for more JoJo. I was so hungry. And I didn't want to read well, part four in the manga because I was just about to see it animated. And I wanted to see it animated for the first time instead of I guess, I guess if that I guess if that experience worked for you, then, uh, you know. Yeah, it was all right. That's cool. The only thing I can't stand is a permanent part skipper. Someone who's like, yeah, I just heard five was bad, so I didn't watch it. What are you, an asshole? There's more JoJo to consume. Get back in there, soldier. Your job's not done. Anyway. So, Jodio is choking the fuck out of Rohan because he fell through the floor. This is awesome. After the whole chapter of, like, fear and tension and panic, <clears throat> once the rain hits, the momentum starts to shift. And then right here, he's so quick with the fucking cable ties, too. He ties up his neck and then immediately soop, soop, and gets his hands, too. Dragona is so happy to see him. Look at the panel of Dragona, and then she says Jodeo. Jo jo Jodeo, say Jodeo. Can do, Jodeo can do his own stand rushes. <laughs> He's just that fast. Speed. He's just that fast. Alright, so, <laughs> I love that as soon as Rohan gets a good look at his face, the first thing he says is, terribly sorry for, uh, all this. <laughs> like, he really does not like having to do this to Rohan. He's a big fan. rain stand so can it be that rain has lots of weight after it's seeped into the carpet you made it punch through the concrete floor underneath i think i think i also uh i also predicted this um like way back uh it may have been like in uh just in dms to you um mm -hmm. but uh i said that like you know i think he's gonna use uh the ability to soften the floor and just sort of like use that in a fight mm. and lo and behold <laughs> Well, let's see. I'm going to fucking search our DMs for the word floor. If you truly have predicted this, let's give you credit. All right. Nah. It might have been a different word, like ground. Probably ground, or I don't know. Hmm. Did I maybe post it in West? I don't know. I don't think I would have posted it in West. It's like, I think you're the only one I talk to about uh, the JoJo lands currently. I can't I find it, but I don't doubt that you may have predicted it. And if not, it's possible that I mentioned it offhand. Uh, on the in, podcast. On the podcast, but, you know. Don't, uh, don't, cool... don't, go, don't go and try to verify that right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to take a while. This is a pretty cool usage of his share. So far, we've seen it just be heavy and crush people. We've seen it be like normal rain, and then all of a sudden, depending on the object it's touching, it turns heavy and blasts through it. And then this is just another usage of that ability, basically. But it's we've pretty damn cool. To, we've seen him use it to rain cactus spines or something. I think... What happened there was that the rain hit the cactus and then, like, picked up and carried the cactus spine downwards. So, like, the raindrop hit Rohan's finger, but it had a cactus spine in it. I don't know what huh. the big deal with that was, what the big idea was, but if that's a thing that it can do... Like, let's say there's, like, a leaf in the tree above you that you need. You can have rain hit that leaf and then the raindrop absorb the leaf and carry it down to you. That sounds kind of like that. Just sounds I, I like was going to bring uh, it like, up. That sounds like Josuke's bubble with extra steps. Yeah, yeah. No, it does. It sounds exactly like Josuke's bubble, which makes me think, because you know we haven't seen Jodio's birthmark yet. We've only seen Dragona's. It makes me think he definitely is descended. Uh, oh no! Wait, he can't be, because he's a uh, uh, a kid of. Joseph Joestar's daughter. So that actually has nothing to do with soft and wet. Bummer. Hey, when are we going to see Josuke and Yasuo's kid? When are we going to get the, um, the Morio Town 1901 Johnny Joestar, the Legend of Johnny Joestar flashback, but for the Legend of Josuke Higashikata? When are we going to get that, huh? I need that. Don't hold out on me, Araki. I don't know. Maybe he'll flash back to it in this part. Maybe he won't. Hmm, he better... Part 8 ended bad and too soon, and if we get another word on it, 
in this, I may forgive him for that. All right. I love that Paco just wants to kick the shit out of this guy. Also, also, can I point out there's sort of like a meta commentary in this? Yeah. Where it's like, you, right now you you are um, you, you are Jodio, basically. It's like you're so pissed at a, at a Rocky, but he makes stuff that you love. <laughs> he's a magica. He may be rich, but he's a special rich guy. I love that line. But I love that Paco and uh, Usagi are both just wild assholes. Shut up. Let me give this guy a good kick or two. Jodia is like, no, no way. I respect him. I think today is going to be a great day. And then that little panel of Rohan, you can see his disposition changing. He's like, this kid's interesting. So Dragona is explaining the police have been called. He knows our names and identities. And also this diamond for some reason. I have no idea why. I don't know what's up with it, but I couldn't steal it no matter how hard I tried. I wonder if it's something where, like, you can't steal it, but it can be given. Do you remember? Oh. Do you remember yeah. when Jobin said, he was quoting Mitsuo Aida, the poet, but when Jobin said, if you take something by force, there is never enough. And wasn't that also, like, one of the conditions of um, the fucking, uh, what is it called? Um, Sugar Mountain? stand yeah i think so i think you can't it's like if, with that if, you can't if you steal give it, away. it it doesn't count if it's if you steal it all or if it gets stolen from you that also doesn't count as uh yeah the, um... you have to exchange it for goods and or services like you have to be buying something for your money you can't just like throw it away so it's actually the opposite it has to be transactionally exchanged you can't just lose it or give it away but yeah that does remind me of that but when Jobin said, you can take, if you take something by force, there is never enough. If you share it, there will always be some left over. Crazy that Jobin said that and then was immediately like, all right, now to use force to get what I want. Jo Jobin went from like, uh, from off left to, uh, to lib right really fast. <clears throat> he ran the fucking spectrum. He went right across it, all over it. You can't tell where that guy's lies. That guy's loyalty is truly lie. I don't know, man. Jobin was a disappointment. I wish Jobin was the final villain. I really do. I, w I wish that uh, that Josuke had fought him like, yeah. one more time. Again, my Breaking Bad analogy. They had the early fight where neither of them really knows who the other one is. And now we were really supposed to have like a second fight where now mask off. You know, we, we truly know what we're dealing with. And they just never had it. And it was very sad. Anyway. Jojolian disappointments aside, let's Wait, keep sorry, rocking. What's the, sorry, what's the, what's the Breaking Bad analogy there? Uh, Josuke is Hank and Jobin is Walt. That first little battle that Hank and Walt have, a minor social battle out by the, uh, the, the pool when he's making oh, his son drink. I thought, I thought you were thinking of like when, they, when uh, Walt was hiding in the RV... Uh, from Hank and you know trying to get him to leave but he can't reveal that he's there that actually reminds me of when uh, when Jobin is sitting in his car and he's like just now at my house Josuke killed Tamaki Damo like he's he's the Walt and he's stuck and he's like watching his allies die one by one or get caught anyway but that minor social battle that Walt and Hank have out by the pool where, like, everybody's watching them and Hank is like, <laughs> it's okay, everybody, you know, don't worry about it. Like, they're trying to save face. It's a social battle for dominance. It's not a battle battle. It's, like, the beetle battle. And then, you know, we needed to have that moment where they're both mask off, like, I'm the good guy and I'm the bad guy, and now we're going to fight not pretending anymore. And it never happened. Bummer. Anyway. Okay. Jojo Lee and disappointments aside, back to the Jojo lands. Can't steal the diamond. Got can't it. Can't steal the diamond. What are you talking about? What do you mean you can't steal it? Rohan's so fucking awesome, you'll all be leaving empty-handed. And I'm saying this with your best interest in mind, but you would have been better off being captured by me. 
Unfortunately, as a result, what's going to happen to you next will be even more dangerous. Dragona Joestar. Paco Lovelantis. I'm not going to say Labyrinthus. I'm going to say Lovelantis because that was what it was in the first chapter. Oh, and yeah, I I'm going to say Lovelantis as well. Dragona Joestar. Honestly. Paco Lovelantis. Usagi Alohaoi. And the 15 year old Jodio Joestar. You're being followed. And then the little reaction shots with the sweat drips. And Jodio is like, hey, everybody, today's a great day. We're coming out of this on top, and we can definitely get a plane. There's no problem. The way that he says that reminds me of uh, in, like, the last episode of Better Call Saul, where he's asked, where do you see this ending? And he's like, with me on top, like always. We just need to get back to Oahu, and we'll deal with the evidence of the robbery somehow. Picks up the phone. Here, Rohan Sensei, your phone. Please call them back. But this time, tell the police that there was a mistake and that the patrol car doesn't need to come. Call them back, please. I refuse. He said the thing! He said the thing! Man said, Daga kotoaru. I clapped when I saw it. I clapped because it was familiar. I clapped because it was different. It broke new ground! It took 12 years to make! I'm pretty sure Jojolian actually did take 12 years. Anyway, I love this panel. I refuse. You refuse? Aw, oh, dang. You're wasting your time. Even if I retracted the report, the I patrol car would still work. come. I know, and then the next panel at the bottom of the page, he still has this expression on his face like, hmm, I really thought that was gonna work. Patrol car would still come. Hey, Sensei, you don't gotta worry about that. He's tapping the phone against his forehead. I don't know why. Everyone's like, huh? Question mark? Also, this... This reminds me... Of Attack on Titan, somehow. But I don't remember what scene. I don't remember where. But this sort of, like... One person is backed into a corner, but is like, No, I'm not gonna compromise my morals. Fuck you. And the other person's like, well, you're really about to do what I'm going to tell you to, and you don't know it yet. I don't know exactly the parallel, but this is giving me vibes. Also, like, um, like Joseph's early gimmick, where it's like, the next thing you'll say is this. You know, just Jojo being a master of uh, social engineering. <laughs> Which Jojo would be the best in a presidential debate and why would it be joseph joestar hmm. discuss in the comments <laughs> vote now on your phones and everyone voted so hard the palace caught fire all right so back to jodio i love the way he's talking to rohan he's like completely cool under pressure and this is the difference between him and the other three is that he's like a sociopath. Like he doesn't have the same limits and regards for other people as maybe they do. He's willing to do things that they're not. And he has a very strange, cool under pressure attitude because he's like, no, nah, I know everything's fine. I got this because he's willing to do things. Others aren't. It's pretty cool. Ah, coffee. All right, you know, Sensei, back when I was keeping watch over by the pool, I saw some of your new sketches on that iPad. It was actually so cool to see Pink Dark Boy half-finished. That was really awesome. Rohan's like, so what exactly? <laughs> I'm a fan of yours, Sensei. I read your stuff all the time. It really speaks to me in a way, you know? Because I respect you so much, I sort of get it. Like the approach or your stance towards manga. Or like philosophy? I I'm imagining, I'm imagining um, that scene from American Psycho, uh, except um, uh, uh, Patrick Bateman is replaced with Jodio, and he's saying, "You like Rohan Kishibe? His, His earlier early work, work was a little <laughs> it was a little too was... avant-garde for my taste." And he's he's my... like, "Sorry." But when but when he started writing Pink Dark Boy, that's when I believe he really came into his own. Commercially, Commercially and artistically. artistically. <laughs> I said that at the exact same time as you on my end, so it'll be perfectly synced for the recording. Yeah. Or even like the other scene, because you've seen the rest of American Psycho, yes? 
I have not seen the rest of oh, it. Oh my I've god! Seen, I've se- I've seen I've seen several scenes from it though. That but, needs to be uh, our next little movie night, bro. Entirety. Next little movie Excellent. night. Excellent. We gotta watch American Psycho. Let's do it. Excellent. Cool. Appointment scheduled. We'll pen it in. We'll pencil it in. But like, there's another scene in that movie where he's uh he's like having a threesome with these two women. But he's kind of just, like, making them fuck each other while he talks about this Phil Collins album with Genesis. And he's talking about the history of Genesis. And, like, I liked them more with their previous singer. But Phil really brought something to the group. Like, they're having sex with each other and he's, like, filming it and just, like, explaining Genesis to them. And it's really out of touch. It's really funny. It's as good as the Huey Lewis scene. But, uh, different. I don't know. Nobody dies. It's just, like, very weird. It's fantastic. So this sort of reminds me, like his approach or his stance towards manga, maybe something approaching philosophy, like something that came down from the heavens. I understand. That four circles short work of yours, Sensei, that was so good. Also, this is a reference, this four circles thing, this is a reference to the Rohan Kishibe The Spoke chapter, uh, Hot Summer Martha, which he's um, like during the COVID pandemic, and he's like drawing a thing. I actually haven't read it. But I know that there's a thing where he, he, he draws this, uh, this short story. It's called Three Circles. And it has this thing in it that looks like a stand. And its body is like these three circles. And by the end of the story, he changes it so that it's four circles. I haven't read it myself, but I know this about it. So that Rohan, when he looked at his phone, it was uh, there was a Morio app on his phone. And the Morio logo was OG Universe Morio. Not the one with the crown, the Jojolian universe, Morio. So even though this Rohan is in the Jojolian Steel Ball Run Jojo Lands universe version of Morio, they're still giving us this thing, this this they're throwing us a little bone, like, oh yeah, four circles. He did that here too. So what they're telling us is all the all the thus spoke stuff still happened to this Rohan. Like he's similar enough to our original Rohan. Even if he never met Josuke, yeah. all those side stories still happened in this universe. It's it's like um, it's like when you when you look at uh, the um, the powers and abilities of like any um, basic like like if we if we take like Spider Man for example because you know that's topical Spider Verse just came out. Uh huh. Um, but like if you if you look at the page of, uh, like any page of like any Peter Parker variant from like whatever, right? Right. And you look at the powers and abilities sections it says seemingly those of peter parker of earth 616 mm-hmm. right and that's just your standard it's like you know this parker is like the one you know unless otherwise stated you know it's funny this across the spider verse thing came out right after right around the same time it was a couple months ago but when uh rohan was revealed to be at this villa and people were like rohan is canon in every timeline <laughs> That is some Spider-Verse shit. I haven't seen Across yet, but I know people are talking about, like, oh, it's a canon event. It happens in every timeline. It, 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 can, we, can we get into, into the Rohan-verse? Into the Rohan-verse! Also, just thinking about this just now, because this Rohan never met Josuke, Pompadour Josuke, Part 4 Josuke, I really, 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 really want him to meet Josuke Part 8. I really want him to meet Gappy. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be fucking awesome? I think it'd be awesome. I think it's unlikely. I don't know if this Rohan is coming back into the story. I think he is. I think he will be coming back later, but we will figure that out. So. Sorry. Anyway, he's praising four circles. Hey, Jodio, what the hell? I have no idea what he's talking about. I'm talking about the lava, Dragona. All the lava photos I found when I was investigating Sensei. And the volcanoes. And then Rohan gets that one single sweat drop. This is the only time he has been depicted as sweaty or nervous so far, the entire chapter. That one tiny sweat drop. Oh, man. I just I just love how Araki puts random words in, in quotations. Yeah. The lava. And the volcanoes. And on the way, I stopped by the room with the safe. I like the colored manga just because it puts those words in red. <laughs> That's a fun touch. I like that. 
came down from the pool area path on the left, and I walked down that way all the way to the bag and came in the house to the entrance over there and made my way here. And on my way, I stopped by the room with the safe, and he takes out the two lava rocks. Now, did I or did I not say, like a chapter or two ago, I think that those lava rocks in there are special and different, and he's, like, coming to investigate other volcanoes to try and find, like, what makes these special and different. He's trying to find more rocks of that type. I believe I, I predicted something, something along those lines. I, the, weird, the weird thing is I, I only remember there being one of those in the safe. I didn't see another. Well, let I me go there was back only one in the original. to when we get into the safe with the diamonds. Nope, they're still looking for the safe. Still haven't found it. Da, 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 da. Right, okay. So we, we open the safe. Oh, yeah. Um, there definitely was only one of them. Oh, shit! What? What does um, the Mate Kudasai do? <gasps> but did anyone say that they want it? Because he can't do that by himself. You're uh, a genius, though. What the hell? I, I just realized that just now. Because there's, there's only... There's only one of them it looks like there's one and then two tiny crumbs what the fuck i wonder i wonder what if yusagi is lying and he can actually use his stand to make duplicates of anything and he's just pretending that he needs somebody else to help him activate it but is there ever like an opportunity like where we don't see uh, Jodio and Usagi where like he could have been like hey pst, you know I don't know I don't know I mean Usagi like, is like standing in the hallway during the cat battle and I don't think he has an opportunity to go slip away and uh oh no okay I think perhaps right when they're about to leave out the window they're leaving out the window and then Paco's backpack is open Dragona's like what's with the diamond I don't know. We don't see Usagi for a couple pages. No, no, he's standing right there. I don't know, but that's 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 smart. I like that your brain went there. That's really cool that to would, think about. That would be absolutely genius. Unfortunately, I think it's I think it's just a retcon. Yeah, like I that time that Rocky drew. He wanted two of them. He drew way more fruits on the fucking Lokakaka tree at the end of chapter like ninety one. See, see, the problem is I'm too smart for JoJo. <laughs> you just you're on another level, man. Your brain is so My expanded. My IQ is too high. <laughs> 200 IQ plays. But I, I want to pat myself on the back because I predicted that there's something special about the lava rocks in the safe, which is different than the lava rocks in the room with all the equipment. It looked like he was testing them to find more lava rocks with special properties like the ones in the safe. And I think I was right about that. I may yeah. have even said it seems like the lava rocks are actually more valuable than the diamond, but I'm not sure. I remember I thought that deep down in my heart, and it turns I see, out it's I true. I remember you saying something like that. I'm going to pat myself on the back. Here we go. That's two pats for me. Correct prediction. Wasn't that hard. But, you know, I followed the breadcrumbs Araki left, and it led me to the right answer. I think it would be really cool if uh, we find out next chapter that, uh, you know, there actually was only one in the safe, and he somehow... Mate you know, could have that shit while nobody was looking. So these were Wait, locked does up. He, does, he, does he have to tell it to, um, to, to uh, fucking Ohawi, or can he just t say directly to the Mate Kudasai? That's the other thing. I don't know. But also, doesn't the Mate Kudasai, like, go over there and become the thing? Like, yeah, it transformed it into the security camera. But, but but if he can send it out independent of himself and somebody else can give it a command, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm just trying to cook something here. Let I him cook. I don't know what I'm cooking yet. So Let him cook. I don't know. I don't know what it is I'm cooking, but I'm cooking something. You're working on a nice broth right now. Your options are open. You could cook anything. You just got to get that broth going. But, but I uh, love. I don't know. I love this fucking scene. This really made me like Jodio a lot. This is badass. He's doing all this sweet stuff and complimenting Rohan on his manga. And he's like, I respect you. I like you. We're not going to hurt you. I'm holding back my comrades from kicking the shit out of you because I respect you so much. And then he takes out the lava rocks. 
And he's like, these were locked up there in the safe with the diamond, you see. Right beside the $6 million diamond that everybody's all perplexed they can't seem to steal for some reason. You talking about the lava rocks that were in the safe in that room? It's not the diamond that was the most valuable thing in there. It's these things. And then now Rohan's really starting to fucking sweat. Sensei didn't come here for vacation. The reason he came to Hawaii was really for these lava rocks. Uh, why are the rocks of value more valuable than a diamond? Blah, 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 blah. Guys, I'm getting to that. <laughs> His dumbass friends are like, what are you talking about? And he's like, guys, pacing. Shut up. He should be team leader. He's like way cooler than the rest of them. Cooler under pressure, I mean, but also cool like rad and sick and awesome. He's fucking really intimidating here. Like he went from sweetly complimenting his manga and saying what a big fan he is to making him sweat profusely. Guys, I'm getting to that. Now we get Kishibe Rohan to tell us what they are. So let's get back to our conversation, Sensei. You were just saying you refuse to call the police back. And also, this is crazy because when when Rohan says, I refuse... He, like, never goes back on it. He's, he refuses. Fuck you. Like, you can never make Rohan do something he doesn't want to do. You know the Japanese title of Thus Spoke Kishibe Rohan is actually, uh, Kishibe Rohan Ugokanai? I forget what it is, but it's, Kishibe Rohan does not move. Like, the immovable Kishibe Rohan is the actual title of, like, the Japanese words they use in the title. However, on the covers, there is also the English phrase printed, Thus spoke Kishibe Rohan. So that's what we all call it in the West. But it's called Kishibe Rohan does not move or is immovable. And that's his whole thing. Like, remember when he said, I refuse to fucking Highway Star? And he was like, there's nothing in the world that feels better than telling someone no when they're sure they have a yes. It's my favorite thing. That's actually... That's actually that's actually pretty good because it's like you know it's because because the the thus spoke stuff is a spinoff of part four which is diamond is unbreakable so you have diamond is unbreakable and then you have Kishibe Rohan is immovable. That is really cute. I've never thought about that parallel before. Immovable and unbreakable. Also, did you guys did you hear everything that people were saying? Like, Jodio is gonna try to break the diamond. And Rohan's gonna be like, don't you know, that diamond is unbreakable. <laughs> Title drop. Title drop five parts late. <laughs> right, so. he's br- It is a very crazy diamond, though. It's a, it's a super crazy diamond. It do be kind of crazy. It do be kind of crazy, though. All right, so he's explaining. Let's get back to our conversation, Rohan Sensei. You were just saying you refuse to call the police back. Yeah, so when he refuses, I'm like, well, shit. That's it, then. He refused? He's not going to back down from that opinion. It's Rohan. He's unmovable. And Jodio somehow manages to make it happen. He actually intimidates and backs him into a corner to the point where he unrefuses. Never seen anyone get one over on Rohan like this. Incredible. Crazy. So he's saying, we're going to leave this villain head to the airport. We just want to go home and not make it a big deal. So listen closely. If we can't get on that plane, or if somebody we don't know stops us at the airport, essentially, if for any reason we can't get back to Oahu, even if it's due to, say, a typhoon or something, at that moment, I'll immediately break apart this lava rock and throw it into the sea. So when the police come here, I need you to tell them that nothing happened. Okay, Sensei? Don't refuse. Jodio is so fucking cool! This was awesome to read. Someone's actually going to beat Rohan at stubbornness. <laughs> I never thought I'd see the fucking day. Put it, put it, put in the green screen of Walter White, uh, like take, like taking a sniff of the, uh, the vat and going, someone cooked here. Someone cooked here. <laughs> Man, Araki literally is cooking with this part. Every chapter so far has been either like moderately awesome or extremely sick. All right, next. And then this is so sick, this whole page of buildup, and he's talking to him, and he says, don't refuse. Go ahead, call them. Here's your phone. Smash! And Rohan, like, hesitates slightly too long, and he's like, well, just gonna start smashing these. It's like you're intimidating, you're interrogating someone, and you're like, I'm gonna cut off your toes unless you fucking tell me this. And they, they take too long, and you're like, all right, there goes the first toe. I fucking love uh, Usagi Aloha's face in this cutaway. Yeah. Whoo! Shit! 
Sheesh. Sheesh. He literally said sheesh. <laughs> also, call them. Go ahead. Here's your phone. It's like, here, since your ass want to act. <laughs> I don't even know what I would say there. Since you want to act a clown, put these on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the clown shoes. You know uh, May from Guilty Gear? Yeah. I like the one that's like, uh, she's she's handing you a dolphin, and it says, here, go ahead, since yo ass want to act Totsugeki. I love that. All right, so he makes Rohan fucking snap. He smashes this rock with the phone, and Rohan loses it. Are you out of your mind, you asshole? Dragona, huh? Usagi, sheesh! Paco, hey, 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 hey! And then, so cool, cool as a fucking cucumber, Jodeo just, whew, there's still one left. Badass. I love this so much. So it looks like, <laughs> ta-da! <laughs> looks like I was right. The most important things in your safe were these lava rocks. <laughs> Dude. So, th th uh, Paco just seems like an idiot. He's like, hey, what's going on with those lava rocks? And Usagi seems like he's maybe too smart. So how valuable are they exactly? And then Dragona, how much more valuable than the diamond are they? Like, everyone's concerned about the dollar amount. They don't realize this is some Milagro Man shit we've stumbled upon. That, I don't know, but I think Rohan Sensei knows something about how they're different from the other lava rocks. But now we're the ones in possession of them. Their, their reactions represent the average JoJo reader. Yeah. So People you got fucking like... the guy who doesn't know what's going on. You've got... Uh... So uh, how much are we talking here? And then yeah. you got wait are they are they are they are they connected with the diamond? What's going on? Yeah, you really do have like Araki portraying all the trains of thought that must be going through a reader's mind through these three characters. It's crazy. We've got Jodio and then like three speed wagons. We've got three commentary characters. Various flavors of dumb. All right, so. We're all okay now, right, Sensei? Now our safety on the last plane out this evening is guaranteed. Let's go. How do we? What do we do about the six million dollar diamond? Uh, Paco, how about you take it? I don't feel confident I can. Oh, sure. All right. He just snatches it up. And then this bit. Wait, Jodeo Joestar. I have something important to say. And also, this is how I know he never met Josuke. First of all, because we're in the SBR universe and the fucking family lineage is different. Although. However, this is kind of the Josuke, if you think about it. This is Joseph Joestar's other child, his possibly illegitimate child, that person's kid. You know what I mean? This isn't Holly's kid. This is uh, Rebecca Ann, what's her name? Barbara Ann Joestar. Barbara Ann Joestar, cool, yeah. So... Joseph Joestar had a kid it's, with Susie it's jo Q. It's Josuke, it's Josuke a generation removed. Yes, it's one generation removed from Josuke. But it's like, Joseph Joestar and Susie Q make Holly. Joseph Joestar and somebody else makes Barbara Ann. And so Barbara Ann is like sort of in the spot of that illegitimate child, in the spot of Josuke. And so then this is one generation down from that. This is sort of... A forgotten Joe Star encountering Rohan once again. Because we, like we because we couldn't have the uh, we couldn't have the bastard child of Dio. <laughs> yeah, I mean I don't know. Has he got some Brando in him? We just don't know. I still think that there's a possibility. Maybe, maybe he maybe he has a little Brando as a treat. <laughs> just as a treat. I still think there's a possibility that uh, Barbara Ann is actually not. A Joe Star by birth, that maybe she's a Joe Star by marriage. I don't know. Or no, of course she is. But like, what if um, they're from uh, different marriages? You know, I don't know. Who cares? Not important right now. But well, the fact is, that, yeah, that would mean that uh, Jodio and Dragona's dad is a, uh, a missing protagonist. <laughs> yeah, I guess he is. I don't know. We got missing protagonists all over the fucking timeline in this one. Oh, yeah, we also have, like, all the Georges from the original timeline, so I guess... Right, right. You know, there's there's precedent. Dude, somebody should write a spin-off about uh, Sadao Kujo, Jotaro's father, the jazz musician. 
I don't know what it would be about, but it should be about, like, his inability to relate to his son. Like, <laughs> he doesn't understand anything about stands or the supernatural. He's just like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> it would be I funny. I mean, he's not... It he, he wouldn't really be a JoJo, but then again, I suppose the main character of, uh, of my favorite uh, JoJo fan project isn't really a JoJo either. He's a ho-ho. What's your favorite JoJo fan project again? It's a... Uh, Blood, Blood Sun Vendetta? Yeah, I actually didn't even get... <laughs> he's a ho-ho whole horse. I didn't even... Well, no, 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 no. His, his dad is whole horse. His name is Ho he, is Jose Quijo de Caballo. Oh. Means, uh, uh, Jose, son of the horse. Dude, I didn't even... We haven't even gotten far enough in Blood Sun Vendetta, or I haven't watched far enough even to know the character's name. I didn't even get there. Oh, it's not it's not in the actual thing. Oh, it's, okay. uh, it's like a, you, you would have to watch uh, Rice Pirates <laughs> updates. <clears throat> How far along are they in that? I think they're still at the same place. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's it's real. It, he's, he's real slow working on it. Let the man cook. I'm, I'm letting him cook for sure, but. Stop. I don't want to... I don't want the... He may, have released, he may have released one extra chapter since the last one we watched. Um... Yeah, I'm pretty sure the only one I saw was chapter two. Chapter three... I'm looking at the, the thing right now, the little preview that it plays, and I'm, I don't think I've seen this. Stuff to watch after well, the podcast. Cool. Yeah, whatever. All right. So the reason I know he never met Josuke is because he would be like, Joe Star? Oh, I know a Joe Star. I know you guys, which he is not doing. This is the well, first time he's heard in the mind, video. Keep in mind, Josuke is not a Joe Star. He's a Higashikata. Right, but I mean, the events of part four would have led him to encounter Joseph Joestar and stuff and know about. Well, no, he would he would have met jo he would have met Jotaro Kujo. He oh, met Joseph. He would have met, met old Joseph. Yeah. There's that conversation in the manga that they cut from the anime where they're Joseph is asking him, "Can we please have English translations <gasps> of your of your manga?" Oh, and he's right, like, yeah. there are Taiwanese and French translations, but I guess Americans are just too stupid. They don't understand the subtleties of my work. How far we've Damn. come. Harsh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so wait, Jody Ojostar. I have something important to say. Come over here. I have something I want to say to only you. I can't believe I, Kishibe Rohan, was bested by this bunch of no-good brats and even forced to make a deal with them. It's quite humiliating. But you, I find rather interesting. If you're going to take that, then a responsibility comes with it. You are by no means to let go of that lava rock. There's only one, make absolutely sure. If you handle that lava rock with care, then you'll be able to become filthy rich. Such a mechanism will gradually become yours, a law of nature that lies in that lava rock. Go ahead and want. Embrace ambition. Don't lose heart. Climb higher. What is this lava rock? Are you going to tell me, or are you just teasing me? You're the one that drew the card. I'm only leaving it in your care. I'm not giving it to you. We'll meet again. I'm sure of it. I'll make sure to rescind my report to the police. Be careful and take your plane home. Go, Jodio. And one last thing. This should go without saying, but do not speak a word about what you know about the, uh, the lava rock to anyone. Understand? Just keep it to yourself. Can you trust those comrades of yours? I wouldn't if I were in your place. So, Rohan in Rohan's role in this seems like the Koichi, basically, to uh, Jodio's Jorno. You know, just in in regards of being like a returning character who has a major role in an early arc and then he's out. Right, but I think that that little will meet again. I'm sure of it, and like I'm not giving it to you. I'm just letting you borrow it. I think he will be back later. Like not soon. Probably like thirty five. 40, 50 chapters from now, he'll be back. Like, years from now. Unless Rocky forgets. <laughs> I don't know, man. This seems pretty significant. 
Also, I want to bring up a couple things right here. So first of all, the way that he says mechanism, I don't think we've ever heard Jodeo say mechanism out loud before. It's only been in the narration, correct? Yeah. Also, that narration has sort of gone away, but I hope it'll come back because I like the idea that he's narrating the story. He's framing it. Um, and I wanted to bring up that I think the narration is actually being done by an older Jodeo who has already done this whole story and is, like, looking back on it. So I think in the timeline of what we're watching, like the present events, this is the first time he's heard the word mechanism used this way. I think this is what gives him the idea of mechanisms and that he will become obsessed with them and looking for them and trying to use the mechanisms to his advantage. I think this is where he's introduced to the concept by this conversation with Rohan. And I think the narration is taking place later and he's retroactively describing all this stuff. Just a guess. Well, you know, the framing device theory kind of implies that we know that, um, you know, out of every group of characters that we follow throughout the story, mm -hmm. there's got to be at least one survivor among them, because otherwise the story doesn't make sense. Right. How did Jodio hear about it? Mm -hmm. Also, the this is a retroactive... <clears throat> this is a retroactive thing that we're narrating it after the fact, looking back on it. That is uh, bolstered and supported by the line at the end of chapter chapter one, where he says, actually, it wouldn't have been enough no matter how many people we had. Like, he already knows how the event is going to go, and he's looking back on it. I think that's supported by that little line at the end of chapter one. So yeah, I think this is where he learns about mechanisms from this conversation with Rohan. This is where he's introduced to the concept. And then this whole thing where we'll meet again that's pretty cool. I like that. I want to see him come back later. And then this last part, can you trust those comrades of yours? So like, he's seeding the idea that there will be a betrayal of some kind. Someone may turn against our protag. Who do you think that is likely to be? Hmm. Well, I don't think it's going to be Paco. I think it's going to be uh, Usagi, maybe. Usagi has seemed like a solid member of the team and like useful. Well, also, well, also, like you said, he's like kind of like a, he's kind of a, 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 a secret smart guy. Yeah. You know, the moment uh, when and, he um, knew it was a stand attack before everybody else, that was pretty and cool. His, and his, and his stand, what does his stand do? It creates a fake. It creates an imposter, if you will. <laughs> One might call it suspicious. Have you heard of the hit game Among Us? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know, man. You've been seeming kind of sus lately. Anyway, it's almost like, like there's an imposter among us. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. boom. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so what, what uh, the Mate Kudasai does is like it, you know, when somebody wants something, it creates uh, a fake of that object, right. you know? So like this would be extremely it, useful for deceiving people and stealing it, things, especially from your comrades who are not expecting it's you to use it. It's symbolic about of how he puts up this facade of who he really is. I don't know. We saw the facade crack, and he just seemed like a regular guy who was just a little panicked. But I feel that he does make the most sense for the betrayer. First of all, Jodio doesn't know him like he knows Dragona and Paco. Like, he goes to school with Paco. Dragona is his brother, sister, sibling. Um, Meryl Meki added uh, Usagi to this mission, like, without asking anybody. And he's sort of like a plant. You know, like, she put him on the team. And if he's the schemer that we, that we uh, think he might be... You know, he would do something like lie about limitations of his ability. Right, which I really want to see, because the only time in all of JoJo that a character has, like, lied about what their stand does to their own advantage, like, not just not known, but actively knowing what your stand does and misrepresenting it to your comrades and enemies to have an advantage, is in Purple Haze Feedback, which I have not read, but I know, have we talked about this before? All along the Watchtower? Uh, oh, we may have, yeah. So it's a it's a stand which is a set of 52 playing cards. Right. And uh, the guy 
who uses it, I forget his name. His name is... God, he's got a weird little hat, too. Um, all Along Watchtower, yeah. All Along the Watchtower. Canolo Morolo, yeah, that's his stand. Canolo Morolo in Purple Haze Feedback. His stand, All Along the Watchtower, is, as he explains it, uh, a deck of 52 playing cards. And when he uses his stand, what he does is he, like, taps his foot and claps his hands to a rhythm, and the cards all do like a little song and dance in a circle, telling him information, uh, telling him like what's going on and what he needs to know and things like that. But that is a total lie, a total fabrication, a total farce. That is not actually what the stand does. What the stand does is it's 52 playing cards that can be moved and operated independently of each other. It's like Harvest, like it's a swarm stand, but of a defined size. He's got exactly 52 of them. And he can make them, like, go places and see things and hear things, and he can hear and see what they hear and see. So he doesn't need to do this whole fucking song and dance thing. He just does it to be funny and to make other people think his ability is a lot more limited than it is. He doesn't need to do this whole little spectacle, and because the cards tell him stuff like, there's something over here, and he's like, wow, really? Tell me more. And the song keeps going. But he actually just has, like, 52 little spies that he can put anywhere and make, like, carry small objects and stuff. And, and there's also, like, speculation about, like, how, um, you know, certain characters' stands seem limited in ways that are basically, it, it seems like the character hasn't just hasn't developed them right. enough and could overcome those limitations. Like, um, you know, for example, Joseph Joe stars uh, purple, uh, Hermit Purple, right? Uh -huh. He doesn't actually have to smash the camera to use the ability. We see him use it on a TV. Right. Uh, just fine later in the part mm -hmm. or like um a lot of people think that uh maybe ringo rodigan doesn't actually need to wind the watch it's just sort of like a um uh a habit that he does it's like a tick that helps him activate the stand mm -hmm. yeah hasn't that happened before in jojo where someone's like i need to do this one specific thing to activate my stand so our heroes are like well let's just stop them from doing that thing and then they're like, I've evolved. I can activate my stand without even doing that thing now. Hasn't that happened before? Oh, God. Sounds that, familiar. The, 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 pro the problem is that's just such a general, like, idea that it's like, I would need, I would need to think about it. I don't know. Rohan's stand evolved to the point where he didn't even need to make yes, you look at a page of his absolutely. manga. Absolutely. That's, that's what it is. Yeah! yeah! Look at us. Look at me. Fucking nailed it. All right. So... Blah -dee -da, -dee da Can you trust those comrades of yours? There may be a betrayer. There may be an imposter among us. All right, next page. We're walking away from the villa. The patrol car shouldn't be a problem anymore. Let's go through the jungle back to the road we took here by car. Jodio, can you appraise this for me? It's an original picture drawn by him. It was on a shelf, so I nabbed it. I've never read this manga. Is it worth anything? He's like, huh? I'm not giving it to you, though. It's mine. Seriously? It's hilarious. Jodio is like a huge fan, and Usagi doesn't even give a shit, but he's like, it's mine. I'm keeping it. And then this, this is awesome. Oh yeah, so Paco is now able to carry the diamond perfectly fine. So what do we think? Is it the thing I was talking about earlier, where like, it can't be taken by force, but it can be given? Or, do you think this is the magic powers of the lava rock, already causing us to become filthy rich? Like, now that we're in possession of the lava rock, instead of Rohan... The diamond will return to us if lost instead of to him. I think it's. I think it definitely has to do with like the mechanism of the lava rock. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it's a lucky rock. It's like a Milagro Man rock. It's a rock that causes things to be, or I think just wealth actually, because it happened with the banknotes too. Anyway. And then we have the evil cat, and it turns out the evil cat has friends. Three of them. This is awesome. I love this. This was such a cool final page for the chapter because you're like, whew, wow, all right, we made it out alive. Everything's okay. Nobody died. I thought at least one of us was going to be grievously injured, but it's okay. We all made it out just fine. And then, do -do, the three cats, the cat chase begins. So this was a great fucking chapter. I loved this chapter. This is like a 10 out of 10 chapter for me. You know, Iraqi didn't need to draw the cat's buttholes. <laughs> no, he did not. But also, like, isn't it weird how he's, like, 
intermittently great and shit at drawing animals. Like, these cats look pretty good. Yeah. Like, the cat on the final page, the top right corner cat, look at its little paws. It's because it's cute. He's drawing a good cat here. But he's also drawing them, like, fucking weird and with these crazy pointy ears. So, like, they also don't look like normal cats, but he, they're, they're cat enough. You know, you remember? So, so do we? So do we want to lodge any last-second bets on what the name of this stand is? Oh God, yeah. Well, I mean, it's got to be Cat Scratch Fever, isn't it? Or what's new, Pussycat? Or, or what's new, Pussycat? Right on. Yeah, I forgot about that. The Pussycat Dolls. Hmm. I don't know. Do you think that he would pick a name that's like cat related, or do you think he would just like throw us for a loop and pick a totally unrelated song reference? He he might throw us for a loop. It's it's a fifty. I'm giving him fifty fifty on that. Man, still there has never been in the entirety of JoJo there has never been a sicker reveal of stand names than at the end of chapter one when it was like November Rain. Smooth Operators, The Hustle. Like, that is three fucking hitters of, of songs to reference and three cool-ass you know, names. You know, I was thinking, like, if there, if there were a moment to reveal, like, an enemy stand name, like, right now would be, like, the moment. You right. Know? You just drop a card. Right, just drop a says, little card. Cat Scratch Fever. I don't, I, I think that, like, this is going to be hard to top. This page at the end of chapter one, November Rain, Smooth Operators, The Hustle. That's going to be hard to top. Araki, I don't think, has ever dropped three song references in one go before. And never this cool of references. All three of them. Three heavy well, hitters. We ever, well, have we ever had, like, the, you know, the introduce the gang, like, you know, just sort of like the rapid fire, you know, you know, everybody gets their title card moment? Well, no, we got everyone's names all at once in part five, but we learned about their stands slowly, one by one. Yeah. So, like, th like this is, like, also, like, a thing where it's, like, um, in heist movies, they'll often, like, introduce, right. you know, uh, the team, and it's, like, you know, it it'll, say, it'll say, like, their role, you know? Dragona, the leader. Paco, the muscle. Jodio, the psychopath. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Exactly like that. But man, so this 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 part has great great fucking final panels. Cuz we've got that first one, the final page of uh of chapter 1 is those three stands. The final page of chapter 2 is Rohan, the reveal of Rohan. Final page of chapter 3 is uh the Usagi freaking out and being like, it's a stand, you idiots! And the cat is the stand user! You guys don't get it! And then it's Jodio. Hello? Can you hear me? We're in trouble. He's someone who can see them. That's pretty badass. And then the next one, the final uh, thing is Dragona having dropped the diamond. That's probably the weakest one so far. And then this one with the cat chase begins. All excellent ending pages for chapters. Fantastic final pages. Yeah, definitely. I'm very excited to see what this arc is. Like, I wonder if, like, all the cats are going to have, like, the same stand. It's going to be, like, Rat. Or if it's going to be, like, um, you know, the apology arc for um, that first fight in Steel Ball Run. Ah, you know? the Boom Boom family, yes. The shittiest fight in the entirety of the best part of JoJo. You know, maybe it could be like a redemption of that idea where it's like they're similar concepts, but it's like different applications. Right. I don't know. I think it would be cool if all three of them are doing the string thing together. Like what if in order to deploy the string, the two of them have to be standing at like the ends of where they want the string to be, you know? Hang on. Yeah. Uh, let me just Google something really quick. Google it. Google that shit. That's the opening of uh, Galaga. When you play Galaga, you put your coins in, you press start, and it goes. And it counts your lives. 
Okay, so I'm not finding any musical references to Cat's Cradle. Hmm. But, like, that sounds like what you're saying. Like, you know, the, the three work together to sort of weave it. Right. Cat's Cradle. That makes sense. So, do we want to... Let's play... Let's, let's, let's put a bet on this. You're betting that it will be cat or pussy themed. And I'm betting that it will not be. I'm betting that it will be rando name. I don't want to put money on this. No, I'm just, it's, we're not betting dollars. We are betting just, we're placing our metaphorical bet, bets. Betting internet clout? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't so have much I'm internet also, clout to lose, bro. I, I will bet you one internet clout. All bet. right. Agreed. One, one, Handshake. One, one, me, one measly crumb of clout. <laughs> please, sir. Just a crumb of clout, please. No one will follow me on Twitter.com. I need just a single crumb of clout. Man. All right. Hey, have you seen Breaking Good? Breaking Good? No. Oh, dude, let's watch it right now. Okay. Sorry, podcast. Okay. We got to go. Podcast over. Bye-bye. Chris and I got stuff to do. Bye-bye.